Welcome back again today. Amuba Inna, or Sarah Davis, was from the Yoruba people in West Africa and born in 1843. She would be born into a royal family within the Yoruba people. This dynasty would be located in southwest part of the modern day country of Nigeria. Next door, in modern day country of Benin, the Dahomey Kingdom would rule. With the Dahomey Kingdom expanding and conquering other tribes and kingdoms, they would enslave Sarah and killed her parents and brothers and sisters. Around the age of eight, a British captain by the name of Frederick E. Forbes would visit the Dahomey Kingdom. He would be on business on behalf of the British government and convince King Gizo to give the girl to Queen Victoria. He stated she would be presented from the King of the Blacks to the Queen of the Whites. She would soon be on Captain Frederick's ship and was given the last name Forbes and first name Bonita. Once arriving to England, she would be shown to Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria wanted her to be educated in European society, so she gave Sarah to the Church Missionary Society. Sarah would not stay in England forever as she was sent back to Africa after she suffered from health issues. The queen came under the conclusion that Sarah suffered a cough due to the colder climate, so she would send her back to the warmer climate. Once Sarah returned back to Africa, she would attend the female institution in Freetown, Sierra Leone. At the age of 12, Queen Victoria would command Sarah to come back to England due to Sarah not liking Sierra Leone. Once Sarah returned to England, she would be put under the care of Mr. and Mr. Sean that lived in Chapman. This would happen when Forbes or Captain Forbes died in 1851. Captain Forbes would write, She is a perfect genius. She now speaks English as well and has great talent for music. She is far in advance of any white child of her age in aptness of learning and strength of mind and affection. Over time, Sarah would show she was very intelligent and Queen Victoria was so impressed with her that she would start to give her money. This allowance was given to support Sarah. Her grace, adaption, gift for art, music, literature, and academics would be admired. The royal court would be astounded with her so much she would be allowed to become a regular visitor to the Windsor Castle. Sarah would continue to grow and learn, and in return, she would begin to outshine her tutors. Sarah would gain somewhat of a celebrity status throughout England, a African princess with intelligence, being the best of Britain under Queen Victoria's house. In January, 1862, 19-year-old Sarah was a guest at the wedding of the Princess Royal Victoria. Princess Royal Victoria would be the oldest child of the Queen. Many people would become interested in her, especially James Davis. James Davis was a 31-year-old Yoruba businessman who lived in Britain. James was very much aware of British culture, even taking on some of their culture. He would gain his wealth by trading between Africa and Europe. He would also gain power by involving himself with the British missionaries in Africa and Europe. James would approach the queen for Sarah's hand and the queen obliged. He was very wealthy and proposed to Sarah at the age of 18. She would at first deny his proposal. And for this, she would be sent to live with two older ladies in Brington to change her mind. The house that she was sent to would be described by Sarah as a desolate little pigsty. This would be to push her to marry James. Queen Victoria would soon after sanction Sarah to marry James in St. Nicholas Church on August 1862. 
10 carriages would arrive to the wedding from West Hill Lodge, in which white men would be with African women and white women with African men. Sarah and her husband would live in Bristol, England for a brief time. Soon after the wedding, the couple would move back to West Africa and Sarah would be baptized at a church in a former slave port. Sarah and James would live in Lagos and James would become a member of the Legislative Council from 1872 to 1874. Soon after their arrival, Sarah would give birth to her daughter. Queen Victoria would grant permission to name the child Victoria. The queen would also be the godmother of Victoria. Sarah would take the child to Queen Victoria for a visit in 1867, then return to Lagos where she had two more children. Throughout Sarah's life, she would have a long-lasting cough that was caused by the climate change between Africa and Great Britain. In 1880, suffering from tuberculosis, she died then around the age of 40 in 1880 and was buried in Fuchao, Madeira. Later upon Sarah's death, the queen would write in her diary, saw poor Victoria Davies, my black godchild, who learned this morning of the death of her dear mother. Soon after the passing, Sarah's daughter would pass a music exam and Queen Victoria was very happy about this. Because she passed this exam, the queen would give the teachers and children one day off for a holiday. Sarah's daughter Victoria was given an annuity by the queen and she continued to visit the royal household throughout her life. In his journal, Captain Forbes gave an account of his mission with the relation to Miss Bonnet. I have only added a few particulars about my extraordinary present, the African child. In a former portion of this journal, I have mentioned the Okidan War. One of the captains of his dreadful slave hunt was this interesting girl. It is usual to reserve the best born for the high behest of royalty and the emulation on the tombs of the deceased nobility. For one of these ends, she had been detained at court for two years, proving by her not having been sold to slave dealers that she was of a good family. So extraordinary a present would have least been a burden had I not the conviction that, in consideration of the nature of the service I had performed, the government would consider her as a property of the crown. To refuse would have been to have signed her death warrant, which, probably, would have been carried into execution forthwith. Immediately on arriving, of her own history, she was only a confused idea. Her parents were decapitated. Her brothers and sisters, she knows not what their fate might have been. For her age, supposed to be eight years. She is a perfect genius. She now speaks English well and has a great talent for music. She has won the affections, with but few exceptions, of all who have known her. She is far in advance of any white child of her age, in aptness of learning and strength of the mind and affection. Please like and subscribe. Turn on the bell notification down there so you can get all my videos. Also like and subscribe as well so you can get more videos like this. Add me on all social medias, which is African Network. And until next time, peace, one love. <laughs>